I'm just here wondering if it's just me here thinking that society's qualities have been deteriorating at a much faster rate as time goes on. For centuries, Christian values like love, forgiveness and compassion have been at the core of Western societies. But now it seems like we are trying to build a new world without the foundations that held it together for so long. We're in a day where evil is now being called good. Truth has been turned on its head. The left does a good job of making things that are evil sound good. Instead of saying that you're killing your baby, we say simple things like, you know, a mom deserves the right to have choice. Choice to do what? Choice to murder. Christianity laid the groundwork for so many of the integral institutions we rely upon today. Hospitals and education systems, as well as the foundations of justice and human rights, didn't just appear out of thin air. They stemmed from the teachings of Christ, who urged us to love our neighbors and care for those in need. As it says in Matthew, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When we forget the role Christianity has played, we also forget how brutal the world used to be before Jesus' arrival and sacrifice. It's easy to think that human rights and empathy are just natural, but history shows they were not the norm. As ever, the creation of a vacuum opens the door to new world order, one that, if successful, will likely last for many centuries to come. Just think about it. For over 2,000 years, Christianity has been the control mechanism holding the Western world in one piece. It is only fair to assume that if the main faith system fails, another one will take its place. Invocamos a los Nahuales, a las deidades, y a los demás seres y espíritu divino que habita este lugar. Now, let's entertain a thought experiment. What would the Western world look like if other religions or belief systems were to take the lead? For instance, if Islam was the main religion worldwide, we could witness a strong emphasis on how justice take place. However, without the concept of grace found in Christianity, punishment could overshadow forgiveness. Concerns would be raised on how a system based solely on strict enforcement would manage the inherent flaws and needs of human nature. Similarly, what if Buddhism became the guiding principle? While often praised for promoting peace and mindfulness, a society centered solely on detachment might weaken family bounds and personal responsibility. How would relationships thrive in an environment that emphasizes separation over connection? And then there's a secular worldview. With no moral foundation like Christianity's, the lines of right and wrong could become blurred. We already see this happening today. Over the past few decades, as society has distanced itself from Christian values, we've witnessed a rise in loneliness, addiction, greed, and extreme political divisions, not to mention a profound loss of meaning. In Isaiah 5.20, it warns, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Christianity's teachings on selflessness, forgiveness, and redemption create a unique kind of unity and peace that is very difficult to replicate. In a Christian worldview, every individual is cherished and loved unconditionally. But imagine a world where forgiveness isn't central, where turn the other cheek is seen as a weakness instead of wisdom. So what happens if society continues to drift further away? Picture a world where survival hinges over personal gain. Laws shift to favor those in power, relationships break down because forgiveness becomes rare, and community weakens as people lose sight of their obligations to one another. Look, I'm not suggesting that Christianity is a Euro, but just look at the world without it. Examine countries that have replaced it with different ideologies or power structures. Lebanon 
and Russia serve as examples of countries where shifts away from Christian influence coincided with societal challenges. Lebanon, once a prosperous nation with strong Christian political influence, saw stability decline after power shifted towards other religious and political groups, leading to economic hardship, political gridlock, and increased corruption. Similarly, Russia transitioned from Orthodox Christianity to Communist atheism in 1917, replacing religious influence with state control ideology, which contributed to economic collapse, authoritarian rule, and human rights abuses under the Soviet Union. While both nations' declines can be attributed to religious change alone, the shifts impacted governance, stability, and social cohesion, illustrating how ideological transformations interact with broader political and economic dynamics. As we drift, we will not only lose a religion, but a sense of purpose, a foundation, and even the dignity of humanity. Ultimately, we must really ask ourselves, do we really want to continue drifting away from something that has grounded and guided us for so long? I think there are many reasons why societies have thrived under Christian values. Without them, we risk losing not just our morals, but also our hopes and unity. Before we go any further down this path, it might be time to reconsider what we are walking away from. Birth rates across Western world have been steadily declining, as highlighted by data from World Bank and other demographic studies. This trend has significant consequences for communities, especially in churches where many regular attendees are older. We must recognize that as older generations pass on, church attendance continues to decline. So what can we do as individuals to help revitalize these essential values for future generations? One key step is to encourage young people to become practicing Christians, filling our churches with new generations instead of relying on aging population. So here are three simple actionable ideas to help revive these values and build a stronger future for everyone. Live out your faith daily. Make it your point to demonstrate Christ-like love and compassion in your everyday interactions. As Colossians 3.23 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Whether it's helping a neighbor, volunteering in your community, or just simply being kind to those around you, please, 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 please let your actions reflect your faith. Engage in meaningful conversations. Please don't shy away from discussing your beliefs with others. Sharing your faith can inspire and encourage those around you. As Peter reminds us, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer. To every man that asketh you a reason of the whole hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. So be bold and decisive about Christ, my friend. Support Christian community initiatives. Get involved with local churches or Christian organizations that promote charitable work and community building. This way you can create a positive impact in the world, my friend. In Matthew 5.16 it says, Let your light so shine before men, that they might see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. By participating in community initiatives, you can showcase the love and values of Christ to the world around us. Even if these three ideas don't fit your style, you can still be a walking Bible, even if you don't always preach. And what do I mean by that? Well, most of us have jobs and skills, hopefully. You might be surprised to know that how you work and live your life can influence others towards your faith in God, the way you talk to people, how you sell your products or services, and how you make them feel. These all say a lot about who you are. Your kindness, understanding, and forgiveness reflect what Jesus wants to see in us. And being quiet doesn't mean you can't share a strong message through your actions. Please take the time to help others, even when it feels like they are taking advantage of you. Instead of getting upset, show them God's character through your patience and kindness. Be quick to forgive and show love in everything you do. Your actions can help others see Christ in you. So, my friends, Let's take these steps to instill Christian values in our lives and the lives of future generations. 
Together, we can help mend the fabric of our society and ensure that it thrives under the guiding principles of love, compassion, and understanding. Thank you so much for watching, and if this video helped you, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more inspiring content, and share your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And please remember, your voice matters in this community. By just joining the conversation, you inspire others and help spread love and kindness. Together, we can grow in faith and work towards a brighter future for ourselves and generations to come. And I'm very excited to be on this journey with you. Be blessed.